write on it by hand or do anything that will go through your uh, printer and the sky's the limit. But I encourage you to use what you have. So we traded cards in the sewing group which is a really kind of a fun thing to do and uh, this was made by Chris Horner who's a friend of mine. This was made by Mignon Waterman, who was a great lady here in town who was in our state legislature. This was done by a pattern designer who was in the group, uh, Carolee Pollock. This was mine. You can kind of see it, even some of the same fabrics I've got working with today. This was Tasha Personette. Beautiful. Love these delicate little buttons. Kathy Shuck. This one's really cute. I love the way it makes a face. Yvonne Pufford. Tasha's sister. Judy Klein who is uh, one of our movers and shakers in Helena, another Judy Klein. And this is a little uh, landscape by Susie Walcott, who is actually the person that I did a couple videos with her and uh, I worked in her fabric store when I was a teenager. I thought I would just take a second to kind of show you the backs. Everybody just sort of did their own thing. This is some kind of a thick cardstock. This is a fabric that looks like a, a muslin or an Osterberg. This looks like it was stamped with a postcard stamp or maybe printed off of the internet and it's kind of a cardstock. This is just some old paper with some stuff added to it and it's got a butterfly and I, I like that quite a bit. Here's some decorative paper on the back. Mine is just very plain cardboard. This person's is as well. This is some kind of a vinylized, plasticky uh, material with a nice kind of a grid in it. This is an actual piece of photo paper. This is another one that just has it written. It's by the same person that seemed to have a stamp. And then this is just some kind of almost corrugated looking cardstock on the back there. Okay, so to make your postcards you need to have a plan and you need some kind of a foundation and this is Peltex, it's available commercially, uh, made by Pellon and it's a nice uh, thickness and easy to cut. I've read that you can uh, work on buckram which is uh, used in hat making and it's very stiff and you could use some of that. You could use some duck fabric. It just depends on what you have around. Something that you can sew through that doesn't fall apart as easily as a piece of paper or a piece of cardstock. And then you're going to want to back your pieces somehow. And an easy way to do it is to use photo paper and to just go with a 3x6 card and then sew the photo paper on at the end. And you can do that with the side that's easier to write on. Or you can do it with the shiny side out and then write on it with a Sharpie. You can find commercially available uh, postcards that go through your printer and you can print what you want on and sew that on to your postcard once it's built. 
another way to go. Um, this isn't the same uh, size. Those were three by six. This is uh, just a fourth of a eight and a half by eleven piece of paper, and you know you need to break these apart at the end. Just like this, you'll fold this to to get these free when it comes time. Another thing you can do, and one of my cards will be this type, is you can take printable cards and you can print whatever you want. And then once you've done that um, on the inside, and you know. Clip art has its place, sometimes it's fun. And then you can put your card on the front, which is what I do with my Valentine's card that I make. And then the nice thing about that is it comes with an envelope. And then you can mail that that way to someone. And then one of my other ones, I use this. And what this is, is printable fabric that's made for quilters. And you can take this and heat set it with your iron and sew this on. And that's how one of mine is made as well. One of the nice things about this is that you can whip one of these up and you can put as much or as little into it as you want. It really just depends on what you're trying to achieve and what you want to make of it. So I encourage you to just use this as one of those projects that you can build skills and you can make nice things for people you care about and they'll appreciate it and you'll gain so much in experience. You are allowing yourself to make something small and manageable and see how that goes. You can fuse your work like this this isn't, this uh, backing is fused to my Peltex, but uh, this has Wonder Under or some kind of two sided fusible uh, on it. And I'm going to stitch these down. I'm going to, first I'm going to press them down and then I'm going to stitch around them and stitch them down. And then I'm going to do some kind of border. And this will be on the card that opens up. And I'm not sure how I'll do the edge, if I'll add any ribbon or lace. But all of those things are possibilities. I just wanted to talk a little bit about expectations when you're making something like this. When we were looking at the gallery of the cards that I got at the trade earlier, I kept thinking that they're all beautiful. They're all so different. And some of the ones that aren't as precise in terms of the sewing actually have a whole nother kind of charm. And they're very folk artsy as, way, as, well, as, as well as just amusing and adorable and beautiful and fun. And so I don't want you to think that this has to be perfect. My, my cards are certainly not perfect, but it's a lot of attention put into a very small gesture for someone you care about. And I think it shows, I think when you hold it in your hand, I think you can feel the sincerity and the love. So please don't nitpick yourself into a place where you can't enjoy doing a project like this because this should be fun for the person who makes it and for the person who receives it. This, <clears throat> So I tried this just sewing this onto the uh, front of the card and I kept missing the detail on the back of the card. What I'm doing is using a little steam seam to attach this to the front temporarily. I'm going to stitch this and then I'm going to uh, trim the edges so that they match. 
So I'm lined up so that my guide will run alongside the edge of the postcard and I'm stitching right about, if you think of that as sort of a ditch, I'm stitching sort of in that ditch. And I'm going to use a very large stitch but I, and I am going to back stitch a bit so that it doesn't just rip out. I'm going to walk some of this. My machine is so fast that if I just sew this it's pretty easy to accidentally go off the edge. And then it will look like this. Now I'm going to start making the postcard. I'm not going to use any fusibles and I'm just going to approach it the way that I do most raw edge applique projects. First I'm going to add a backing fabric that I just find a scrap around the room and I uh, kind of put it on on the bias and all I'm doing is using my edge stitcher to stitch this on pretty close to the edge and I'm sort of tightening it a little on the corners. I go ahead and sort of miter them in so that when it's stitched to the backing the postcard won't have a lot of extra fabric showing at the corners. I just do that and trim off the excess. I haven't really talked about it much, but this is a temporary sewing room. We're working on a room that will hopefully be as nice as my last sewing room was. And then the next thing I do is start building up some interest in the background with some larger elements. I add this fabric here, which I just stitch on and, and trimmed off, off camera. And then I'm gonna add a, a big contrasting area, capitalizing on this metallic stripe on this zigzag fabric and so I just stitch that on somehow and trim it off and then I think what I'm going to do is add a big flower similar to the one that I did on the coasters and I I just did this and you know afterwards I regretted that I didn't paper practice for a second because it's been a month or something since I did that and it would have been a lot better if I had taken the time to just do a little bit of practicing with a pencil. But this flower doesn't look that much like a flower, but I still think the postcard ends up being attractive. So I free motion quilt that with yellow thread and trim it out. I almost got my little machine out to do this. This machine is so fast, it's hard to do detail work where there's nowhere to put your fingers. Then I sketch in the stamens, which I hope will cause it to look more like a flower. And I switch over to some black thread and then I stitch that in and uh, try to make it so that that's very noticeable. I think if I wanted to, I could come back and put some very metallic-y uh, gold paint around this area and that it would really add something nice. Here I am pulling the fabric off its paper backing. I've never used this before. I've had it around for years. I think I got it at a white elephant Christmas party at some point. And so anyway, I trim this off to match. I'm sort of going a little bit at a time here. I sometimes approach things slowly when I have never done them before, and that's what I'm doing here. And once I get it trimmed down to size though, it's just a matter of putting it on and uh, zigzagging it down. And I do that uh, without a lot of you know, worry about it. Just try to keep the corners sort of neat and, and stitch that down. So I've tried to have a couple of drawings for pictures that people show me of their work. The response has been low enough that it's been hard to continue that. I want to do it and I'd like to have the prizes uh, get bigger and better as we go along. If I get 25 pictures from 25 different people, you can send more than one. I'm fine with it being the same people every time with some extras. Uh, when I get 25, I will draw two names. The first name that I draw will get the one uh, teal and red coaster that I made last time. And the second name that I draw will get this little teal and red postcard that I made in this video. And I'll get your address and mail it to you once your name's been drawn. 